Hey everybody, it's Dave Whitmarsh again from uh, Best Practice in HR. Uh, today I have uh, uh, Jason Moreau with me. He's uh, somebody that I guess I've been in contact with over the years for um, a decade and a half, and and he's got a new, uh, a newer uh, company that he's uh, co-founded uh, called Surveil, and sort of just wanted to give the opportunity for people to uh, get to know Jason and get to know his company and and uh, see if it's a good fit for you. So, hey, Jason, good morning to you. Hey, thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So how how did you, well, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, Jason? And, and, sure. Uh, a bit about, probably, you're probably looking for, how did you get into this HR technology world, right? Yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah. So my, my background is uh, programming. Uh, believe it or not, um, but you know that's quite it dates quite a ways back. But you know, I was kind of in those pioneer days of the internet when it was first kind of coming to that the you know the web browsers were first being, being developed by Mark Andreessen and all those kind of days. And you know, I saw the light of like, wow, this this internet and the web is absolutely fascinating. And uh, I, I took some of those and I, I I took a really interest into it. And, and my first product I, that I built on the um, the internet was uh, a job board called careerexchange.com and uh, founded that company in, in Vancouver and you know we quickly jumped down to the San Francisco Bay Area um, I think it was like 1998 99 around there uh, and, and grew the job board during that whole kind of boom of the technology phase and, and so forth um, and then from the job board job board led us into led us into another path because you know just listening to our client base you know, they would phone up and put a job on and, you know, they'd phone up 48 hours later and say, turn that job off. we got too many resumes and I, I can't check my email anymore. There, there's too <laughs> much resumes to download. So, um, you know, you know, we went back and started brainstorming. Like, well, what do we do about this? And that, that kind of came to the, uh, the birth of Sonic Recruit, which was our, our applicant tracking system. Um, so, from the job board, you know, we, we still focused on the job board, but, you know, when we, we entered into that phase, that uh, technology bubble in 2001, uh, you know, where the, the whole internet kind of blew up and <laughs> the dot-com world blew up. And, um, and it was a bit of a transition kind of a couple of years where um, the job board kind of, we just died it off and sold it off. And, and uh, we, we focused on the applicant tracking system, Sonic Recruit. So Sonic Recruit, um, you know, was really the, 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 the first quality, um, in my eyes, the, the first kind of recurring revenue stream. And, um, and, and from for Sonic Recruit, out came the Sonic Onboard for onboarding solutions yeah. and on perform and, and the performance management. Um, and all along, you know, we just kept continuing to grow and expand our, our footprint within North America. Yeah. Uh, and you eventually and IPO'd that, right? Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we took uh, the, the name of the company was Cytiva Software and uh, we, we took that public on the TSX venture and um, yeah, we, we uh, raised some capital to expand and, and uh, you know, that, I mean, that's always another <laughs> whole other beast, you know, running a public company and an operations company at the same time. Um, I don't think I would want to go public again to be up to be paid off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a lot. And uh, so in, in 2011, um, Taleo uh, acquired Cytiva Software and, and took us and, you know, rolled us into their product base and sunset some of the technology and, and kept some of the technology as well. Cool. And then, of course, you know, Taleo, as we all know, and, um, I think about nine months later, they were acquired by Oracle. And, and it, was, it was just because they had your product, right? That they thought that Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we finally consumed Cytiva and... <laughs> them out of the market and, and uh, we better go acquire them now um yeah so you know it, it was a it was a, a phase of rapid consolidation where a lot of the vendors were consolidated you know which actually created probably when in hindsight you know you look at the the vendors that kind of really blossomed out of it um, isims definitely benefited in a very large way yeah um you know they just exploded uh, and, and it's kind of fun to watch. Um, and other ones like Jawbite as well. Um, Jawbite has also exploded and uh, done very well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it took a couple of years off. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I remember uh, one of our co-founders, or sorry, uh, not, not a co-founder at this point, but uh, Ian Alexander um, came back to me kind of early stages of exiting Sativa and said, 
you know, there's something around this candidate experience and measuring candidate experience. And, um, you know, we, we, we kind of danced around and, and I, I probably still didn't quite have the energy to jump back full feet into building another business at that point. But, you know, the only thing, it only took about another year, a year and a half. And, and I came back to him and said, hey, you know, you still have that on, on the, the shelf? Is it still viable? And, you know, so we kind of talked around and, and, uh, and, and more than ever, candidate experience um, and understanding the candidate experience going through the hiring process within an organization has become more and more uh, important. And, um, you know, just understanding the candidate experience because if it's a poor candidate experience where, you know, you're not returning your phone calls, you're not letting people know where they are in the hiring process, it, it becomes frustrating for candidates and, right. and they end up, you know, these are also customers of many brands. So take, for example, a retail based company that serves coffee mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, you have candidates coming in through the doors and they're interviewing and they're giving up their time Um and suddenly you have some managers or, you know, whoever it is within your organization disrespecting their time. Uh, well, that reflects on the entire organization's brand. And, you know, to the point where um, you, you have like the, the talent board that does annual benchmarking of candidate experience. And, and what they found is that, you know, you know if there's a negative experience, uh, you know, 46% of those people that have that negative experience will take their business elsewhere. So they're gonna go to the next coffee chain. Mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're going to put you behind. And not only do they do that, but, you know, with the, the, the social media now, like the glass doors, the LinkedIn's, the Facebooks, it's, it's so easy to share your experiences. Right. You know, and that's what's happening is, you know, organizations are, are finding that they're now having like dedicated resources to just, you know, weeding through all the comments mm -hmm. <laughs> on Glassdoor or Facebook or whatever. And it's just to kind of like, you know, stomp out some of these, these fires. Mm -hmm. So which kind of leads you back to like, well, okay, so you need to go start measuring the candidate experience and figure out where there is problems. And so that was the birth of surveil um, is, is really kind of surveil is focused on measuring um, continuous feedback from candidates and continuous feedback from employees throughout the entire um, process of the hiring stages. So whether it's just on your career site, um, understanding like how easy was it to find what you're looking for? You know, what's your primary purpose of looking on our website? What do you, what is it that you um, want out of a career? Um, is it, is it greater purpose or is it compensation and benefits? Um, <clears throat> and then to the fact of like, Hey, is there any issues with our technology? Like, you know, is uploading my resume and it blew up. <laughs> On the resume departure. So, that, you know, to understand that experience, but more, more importantly, you know, the, the real measurements of experiences are, you know, once they're inside your applicant tracking system and, and being able to trigger uh, requests for feedback, you know, from a candidate saying, hey, how was your phone screen today? Um, tell us about that. And, or tell us about that interview with the hiring manager. You know, were they prepared? Did they have a, you know, copy of your resume as simple as that? Uh, did they, um, you know, were they respectful of your time? Like, did you feel like they were knowledgeable about the role and they understood mm -hmm. the company? And you'd be surprised, you know, the, the, the kinds of feedback that we see, it, it's absolutely mind boggling. You know, like, you know, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see comments like, you know, the manager never looked me in the eye once, or sat there on their phone, you know, t -t -t clicking away and, <laughs> and, and it's just disrespectful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the kind of negative experience that translates into you know, lost revenues. And yeah, and you just don't want that associated with your brand at all, right? So, absolutely. So really, yeah. your, your candidate experience is an extension of your company brand, right? Mm -hmm. so. if, if absolutely right, and that's exactly where it is. And, and you know, if you if you search and Google search on Virgin Media, Richard Branson, <clears throat> he has a, a, a you know phenomenal case study where he was able to translate you know poor hiring experiences of candidates into cancellations of those candidates contracts wow. and like yeah they were able to go back and pinpoint this and so it's real and it, it, to the real to the fact of like it was five or six million dollars a year wow. of cancellation canceling contracts so you know you start to look at that and you start to take it on and say, well what if i stretched that over five years well suddenly you're looking at you know 25 or 30 million uh, yeah, so he went out back and, you know, they revamped all their process about, uh, throughout the, the hiring process. And, um, you know, they've actually, you now they, they say they've turned it into a profit center. You know, the fact that, like, you know, the good experience and they provide, you know, incentives at certain points. If you just position a candidate, 
you know, hey, here's a coupon to sign up for, you know, our, our cell phone network mm -hmm. or whatever they have there. So, you know, there's, there's these, these kinds of like case studies and, and um, it, it's really fascinating to watch. And, you know, the awareness of Canada experience is, is really gaining momentum right now. It is. And, so, uh, so it's a, so it's a, it's a, I know it like in theory, but it, along with most HR stuff, right? Everybody needs to know what they need to do or should do. It's just whether or not they have time and the, and the resources yeah. to do it. So, so you feel yeah. that the candidate experience is, is something that's, that's starting to get attention and money or. It is. And, you know, we're starting to see organizations like the enterprises, um, you know, starting to budget for fiscal 2019, um, you know, tools to put in place to start monitoring this. Like, you know, obviously some employers are already doing it, um, but the problem is they're doing it manually. Right. Um, you know, they're, you know, they're doing batch exports of candidates out of other ATS <clears throat> into a CSV file. And then they upload them to a survey tool and they blast out the survey. And then it's kind of like, you know, it's that hope and pray that, you know, they get some responses and they get responses. Then they, they take it and then they export it into an Excel sheet or whatever they are using and they start to analyze it. And then what happens is it becomes a chore. Right. <laughs> um, it's either a full-time person doing this or it just becomes a chore for somebody else and, and then you lose touch of it. So, you know, through surveil, you know, we've automated that entire process as well as the you know, added personalization of all the messages that go out, you know, just the integration of the ATSs and the mm -hmm. real time feedback. And, and um, so and you, have, do, you do integrate with like any technology that's out there almost, right? So, yep, yep. So, we, we have integrations <laughs> built with Taleo Enterprise, Taleo Business Edition, Workday, uh, iSIMS, JobBite. Um, gosh, what are the ones? <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of them. Um, but as long as they have a, an API, um, we were able to integrate. I mean, we even have some clients that they're on some of the older technology where they just do automated uh, exports into an FTP server. And our systems will pick it up out of the FTP server and pull it in for them. So yeah, we're, we're, we're all about automation because really you cannot continuously monitor this feedback without having some sort yeah. of automation. Exactly. Right? Right. There's, just, there's just too much volume. You know, when you take, if your team, if your team of 10 phone uh, recruiters, you know, doing phone screens or a team of, you know, 20 HR managers all doing, you know, two or three, um, interviews a day and then your recruiters are doing, you know, call it eight to 10 phone screens per day. You know, as soon as you start adding that up over a month, you know, the volume is just, it's, it's enormous. Right. And, and to do this manually, it, it's just, it's, it's not feasible. So. Right. right. And, and so where do you see the product or the, or the candidate experience market going? <laughs> where, where, where's it going? I mean, you know, it, it's starting to touch, you know, when people talk about candidate experience, you know, it's such a big term that, that encompasses, you know, so many different people's ideas. Like, you know, when we talk candidate experience, we're talking in forms of measurement, you know, measuring that feedback. Uh, when you, a CRM talks about candidate experience, they're talking about, hey, how easy is it to find what you're looking for on our career site, right? Um, and then other technologies talk about candidate experience. You know, hey, if you're going through the background checking automation, you know, how, how simple was it? And, you know, did we finally looking for? So, in the grand scheme of things, you know, there's just a, a massive kind of cloud of, you know, when you hear the term candidate experience, some people are like, well, what does that really mean? Right. Um, right. And, and so, you know, everyone's got their own definition of a candidate experience based on what their technology provides right now. But in the grand scheme of things, it's really about like, you know, what was your overall candidate experience going through that hiring stages, like from applying to a position to a phone screen touch base with a recruiter to a interview with a manager to onboarding and then candidates you know technically are still employees so it becomes part of the life cycle of an employee inside an organization mm -hmm. and starting to understand you and you can read we can reword that and you say well it's employee experience at this point so as soon as they cross that threshold and they become an employee uh, hired status um, you know, it moves into employee experience, right? right? And so now you have continuous measurement within the organization. And, you know, by continuous measurement within the organization, um, you're able to start to understand, you know, if there's a, a negative sentiment happening in the future. And, you know, you start to understand, like, why is there a negative, negative uh, sentiment? 
and then you can start to put in some um, stop gaps procedures to, to turn your set your your workforce around because you know that is your most strategic asset within an organization is your mm-hmm. employee base right? so um, you know you need to have some kind of warning signals going off saying hey you know things have shifted downwards in the last two quarters you know here's what we think we need to focus on in these particular areas or divisions or these people. So, yeah. Well, you, so, you always find that change is, well, change, there's always hesitation to change, but when you have some data points around um, anything, it, it, it makes the change inevitable, right? If you see a right. line or you see a, you know, the, the experience levels have dropped, you know, it's, it's a red flag. It needs to be right. addressed a person can no longer say everything's fine. You know, the stats are on the table. So it, it just helps, um, you know, make things better, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's that's kind of like what our system brings to life is it's actionable data. It's not just stuff you go look at. You can actually go in and pinpoint, here's a problem. And here's a problem with a particular person even. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and here's the actions, you know, that led to this, this event. So, that's how you know specific it, it, it can be, mm-hmm. um, and, and then you have like actual data that somebody can go and say, okay, let's go and retrain on this particular area, um, and, and you know get this thing back on track. So, cool. And so, uh, have you found that you've had consultants that are working on the the you know the the process sort of come in and and have inquired about your product just to to give that data so that they can consult you know using statistics. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do see that, and um, you know, it, it's a great tool for the consultants, right? To mm-hmm. to go and you know, put it in place, analyze, and then make recommendations um, mm-hmm. based on the finding. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's a great tool for that. So, yeah. so, but, so, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, like, what? To, <laughs> I promise <laughs> you can go ahead this time. Uh, but you know, more, more, it, primarily what we see is the the direct inquiries from employers. Um, right. You know, the talent acquisition leaders are coming in saying, "Hey, we want to understand some metrics around this particular these all these different points." Mm-hmm. And most common points that we see um, people wanting metrics would be, you know, overall candidate experience, and overall employee experience. You know, uh, and then they they want to zoom in and see, you know, what are some ratings of our managers and what are some of the ratings of our recruiters mm-hmm. um, over time and so forth. So um, those are the most common areas. And then, you know, whenever there's warning flags, they dig in a little bit deeper and start to understand you know, what do we need to address. Hey, but, but the inquiries are coming from the, the uh, HR professionals directly. So, so yeah. And, yeah. And, and truthfully, this isn't an install like an ATS, right, where, mm-hmm. where you need a um, huge um, amount of help from – outside consultants or your IT department or, you know, so, so it's pretty right. easy to get off the ground, right? It really is. Um, you know, we, when, cause we've already built most of the integrations with the applicant tracking systems out there. So a lot of them is just a matter of like, Hey, give us your API key. And then mm-hmm. we plug it into our system and then we start pulling in and, and feeding in data. And then we start creating all the campaigns that go around all that. So, I mean, we've, we've had some enterprise organizations, you know, with 10, 20,000 people, up and running in a matter of a couple of weeks, nice. um, you know, and, and, you know, then it's like, as soon as you turn it on, you know, really we've seen like within hours, the feedback coming back, it was super exciting. And, you know, so we, we've, we've, we've got, we've got, we had some of our HR uh, clients, so, you know, sitting there refresh <laughs> so I can see what, what the, the real time feedback is. And it's, it's kind of exciting when you see that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally, totally. And it's obviously, most exciting when you see positive um, comments coming back too. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and so you know, being the the uh, your role, what what is it that you're sort of looking to do or, or looking for? Obviously, you're involved in customer acquisition, but do yeah. you have any other sort of channels or programs that you're sort of looking to connect with? More ATSs. Yeah. Yeah, so so we we have uh, three uh, really strong partnerships right now. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, uh, one of them is with the the talent board, the nonprofit mm-hmm. group, the talent board, and they do annual benchmarking of candidate experience. And Surveil is the platform for the talent board and all these organizations to 
go out and measure the candidate experience. So they'll go out, they'll blast out a, uh, an anonymous uh, survey um, and then to their candidates that have applied over the last year. And then um, all the responses come back within surveil and, and uh, then they'll go in and analyze and, and figure out who has, which organizations have the best candidate experience. Cool. Um, and then that there becomes, you know, they, then they, they would get to benchmark themselves against the other participants and see who's the winners and so forth. And then within surveil, um, if you're a surveil client, you can also go now that you're doing real time feedback and continuous feedback and you're able to benchmark against that data on an ongoing basis. So that, that's really exciting. So that's, that's our first partnership there. Um, the next two partnerships, um, one of them is with a CRM company. Um, you know, so we're really focusing on the always on and branding and, mm -hmm. and aware, like understanding what the candidates are looking for and, you know, how is their experience? And then we integrate into the multiple applicant tracking systems in the back end. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, another strong partnership with a, an applicant tracking uh, company, uh, Jobvite. And uh, Jobvite, uh, you know, it's a very easy system for us to, you know, we spend a lot of work um, integrating, uh, but it's paying off now. And, and in, in both cases, because Jobvite is very aware about candidate experience and continuous candidate engagement. Um, so, you know, we kind of fit very well together and we work well together and um, that, that's been a very strong partnership for us as well. Very cool. And, and so more partnerships like that would be good or? Absolutely. And you know, we are working on more uh, ATS, applicant tracking vendors and so forth and CRMs. Um, so that is a continuous role of what I'm looking at doing. And I really enjoy getting out doing the speaking engagements. Um, mm -hmm. you know, my prior company, I probably didn't do that as much. And then this one here is, more of like, okay, when I came into surveil, I was like conscious, I'm gonna try and get out more and you know, be that uh, ambassador for, for surveil and so forth. So I've been doing that a lot in the spring and you know, been a lot of travel. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little harder on the family this time. <laughs> yeah, totally. And so uh, before we wrap up, is there anything that you didn't cover that you think would be good for everybody to know or? No, I think, you know, it's like, you know, I'm just really excited that uh, the awareness of, of the candidate and, you know, the respecting of their time and efforts and, you know, it's important and, you know, it affects organizations bottom lines. It affects the referrals of, of other people to their organization. It affects their brand. Um, so, you know, I'm super excited that, you know, the awareness at least within North America and the UK you know, is, is gaining traction mm -hmm. and it'll continue to gain more traction as, you know, the economy heats up even more. I mean, the, you, know, you look at the, uh, the amount of job openings in the U S is, you know, I think it's 6.7 million, Seven million and, yeah. you know, there's about 6.4 million available workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just tells you right there that it's a competitive environment. Um, and you know, you need to hire strategic people and good people into your organization to set yourself apart. Yeah. So, you know, that's the reason why it's driving this candidate experience. And, uh, you know, I think it'll continue on, um, even during recessions, it, it becomes important because when you have recessions always end, right. Yeah, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, you got to come out on the other side and, you know, the moment you start disrespecting people, that will come back. At home. So, Perfect. Well said, Jason. Hey, thanks for your time. Enjoy your right, you. uh, your day and your weekend. You. And, uh, we'll we'll uh, if if you happen to be around my trips to BC, we'll we'll hook up. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks. Good, good day. Bye.